guys very good evening to all of you from this month we are going to start the dnb theory surgery papers discussion now this is the first paper i'm going to discuss and as you are going to see each of the papers now you are going to write four papers each of them has a very different kind of question setting okay they cover a lot of portion from different different aspects of surgery so as we start solving i will tell you what is expected in those kind of papers right so let us begin so this is the first one we are going to keep going paper by paper and then exam by exam so today we are going to do the 2022 december paper paper 1 then we will do paper 2 paper 3 paper 4 and then we'll move on to the other exams now let me tell you i have given both my ms general surgery and dnb general surgery exams and let me tell you it's not that hard as it is believed to be to write these papers the good thing about these is they ask very selective very specific questions so you don't beat around the bush answer what is asked now this is going to be your exam pattern which i will share in every paper that you are going to be asked 10 questions each question is of 10 marks and they don't ask direct questions like they will not say 10 marks on men syndrome or 10 marks on abdomen trauma they will specify what they want and you will see in the examples and as you can see they tell you in what page numbers are they to be attempted so you cannot change the order you have to write in this order only and in these many pages only so on an average five sides is what you have but you don't need to use five sides you can use lesser more than being specific more than being quantity the quality is important don't just keep writing to fill the pages as they have clearly given over here right 10 questions each question of 10 marks and you have to write in 180 minutes okay which means per question you have about 15 to 18 minutes per question that's not a lot so don't write unnecessary things write specifically what is asked so i intend to discuss all 10 questions today in case time is a little less we will do some in the upcoming sessions right so let us see how it goes my main message is more than teaching you the topics is to tell you what is expected in the answer just to give you an idea of how much can you write or how much should you write okay so let us begin now what you are seeing here this is paper 1 paper 1 technically means basic sciences which means basic aspects of general surgery it can be anything and everything under the sun it's a very broad specific topic so you will see some of the questions were quite uh, unusual also you need to attempt each and every question of which even if seven questions you have written well you will clear that paper okay so don't worry that okay there were some questions which were very tough and some questions which were absolutely unheard of which are not even surgery it's okay six seven questions if you write well and three four remaining questions if you just manage it's okay don't leave any question because of lack of time each question 15 to 18 minutes is what you will dedicate to when you are writing the answer you don't need to write full full sentences you just need to write the points so what have they asked you this question one as i told you they have given you two parts so technically it is two questions for five marks each this is from the paper itself avoidable factors that compound response to injury and monitoring of patient in shock now my suggestion is if you have seen the videos on the app if you have the notes they will cover most of the things which are asked but apart from this whatever i am going to teach you or whatever i have prepared the answers from is bailey 20th edition and sebastian these were my base books when i studied for my ms and dnb surgery based exams so they are a good starting point they will cover most of the syllabus most of the questions will feature from these books but yeah you have to study them quite extensively not like an mbbs where you had to imp topics alone so avoid the factors that compound respond to response to injury so first you always start the answer with a little introduction and then jump to what is exactly asked don't write unnecessary thing the time is not there so avoidable factors that compound response to injury so first you will write any surgery or trauma 
or injury whenever this happens to the body your body mounts a response okay that is called as metabolic response so you write a little bit about this that your body has a metabolic response to injury metabolic response to surgery so when you are cutting tissue you are not just cutting the tissue and suturing it you are also causing a trauma to the body which your body will react to this response to trauma is what is called as sirs systemic inflammatory response syndrome and it goes through certain phases so initially your body has sirs there it is also called as ebb and flow phase okay or a surge and a fall phase or simply put whenever there is a trauma your body first goes in what is called as catabolic phase where it will burn all the tissue to generate energy and then it will go in the anabolic phase anabolic phase is the building phase or the healing phase this is your body's normal response to trauma so what will alter what are the factors which alter the response to injury and how are they avoided with this is what they are asking you so what will affect recovery and what are these factors which are under your control so there are many factors but your answer will be based on four key factors which if not done properly will affect your response to injury the first one this is all common sense you start with delayed medical attention simply put delayed diagnosis obviously so the later the person comes okay the later the person comes the more advanced is the disease and give some examples like cancer if you come in a later stage of cancer obviously the treatment will change it may become from early operable it may become advanced or it may be in an inoperable stage so your response to injury or response to surgery <clears throat> or response to healing will be affected by the time and diagnosis other example is edh epidural or extradural hemorrhage ideally it's an arterial bleed so ideally the evacuation should be done within 1 hour which is called as golden hour of trauma the second is when you are in the recovery phase if you don't take adequate rest and you go to early return to activity obviously your body if it is in the catabolic phase and you go early return to activity the catabolism will persist same goes for nutrition which is why in surgical patients you avoid nvm status as much as possible on other days where patient would be kept for 3 days 4 days nvm after a open surgery or open gi surgery now you follow eras protocols so kind of eras comes in this response to injury and the fourth is insufficient rehabilitation in this the example you are going to give is occurrence of dvt or a pulmonary embolism or occurrence of complications like basal atelectasis so these are some of the things that can happen if the rehabilitation is not proper like this can happen if the person is not ambulated so i do bariatric surgeries my patients start walking same day if surgery is done in the morning from evening they start walking for risk of pulmonary embolism and dvt basal atelectasis can be avoided by good chest physiotherapy after surgery chest physiotherapy and spirometry so basically you are giving the key points which are avoidable which alter the response to injury with some examples that is the first part of the question second part i am sure you would have done this monitoring patients in shock so you will write the introduction of what does shock mean introduction will be it is a decreased tissue perfusion